welcome to High Spirits Music and Harps. I'm Caroline Mackay, and I've been playing the harp, this Celtic harp, for about 25 years, and over the last 15 to 20, I have been developing a curriculum. The very most wonderful thing that you can do is find a teacher who has a lovely, relaxed technique and is joyful about learning, and do it in the company of that person. But I'll tell you what I have noticed. Of all the people who want to be able to play the harp, there are so many, and at the same time, so few teachers at this point in our Celtic harp history. So I thought it would be helpful to take some video recordings of the lessons that I've developed um, through book one and book two. And we're going to start right now with Celtic Harp Studies, Book 1, Unit 1, and this is Lesson 1. I also highly recommend the study of a friendly um, method of theory. Music language is really what it's called if you have never studied music language before. It really helps you to understand the nature of the music that we are creating. In each of our lessons, I will be adding some of this music language to the study of the harp. So you'll start to understand how the music and the instrument all relate to each other. You don't have to worry if you don't know a thing about music right now. If you're a child or an adult learning from scratch, you can start right here. Besides the study of music, I feel that the harp is not only a physical pursuit, but also a mental and emotional and a spiritual one. And we have all these beautiful language of music. I love the, the concept of including harp and the life of the spirit together. So throughout the book are scattered little fragments of beautiful quotes from various sources that hopefully you will find inspiring. I know that if you're just starting out, you're going to be saying to yourself, what kind of harp do I need and where can I get one? This is a huge subject and it goes on for the entire time that you play the harp, believe me. But just to begin in lesson one, let's say that you find a way to have access to some harps and you're choosing. We'll talk a tiny bit about several different harps just so you can see if you could actually start with this instrument that you found. Here's a sweet little blue one. It has 34 strings, which is lots. It's wonderful. The size is plenty big enough. You have bass strings, you have treble strings. The low string is a C on this harp. The top string is an A. It could be C to C. Five, almost five octaves on this one. This harp also has all its levers right from the bottom to the top, so every string has a lever on it. We'll talk more about those later. Or you might come across a sweet little harp like this. This harp has 29 strings. Again, C is at the base, but it's one less octave than the other harp I referred to. It also has all the levers on the neck, one for each string. It's portable, it has legs, they come off. Uh, you can carry it, you can take it traveling. Super helpful. And this harp, you could play all the way through book one with it we will adapt the left hand if you've got a small harp like this, but it's doable. By the time you get to book two, you will want 34 strings or more. Here is another lovely harp, and it also has 34 strings, but you're going to notice something different about it. A, it's a little taller than the others, so you have to think, what size of vehicle do I have? Will it fit in the back seat or in the trunk? And the other thing you'll notice is that there's only three levers per octave. Every eight notes is an octave. And in this case, there are three levers, one on the F, one on the C, and one on the B. With this, you can play everything in book one and almost all of book two as well. So three levers per octave, the Fs, the Cs, and the Bs are plenty. We're going to talk a lot about levers as we go through book one. If you're sitting down at this harp today or something like it, and it has three levers, you want the C lever to be down, the F lever to be down, and the B string 
to be tuned flat so that you can put the B lever up and that B is natural. So the difference between B flat and B natural. That's all you need to know about them for right at this moment. Here's the last little friend I'm going to introduce you to. This is called a lap harp and it's sweet as anything. Just cute as a button, isn't it? And red to boot. Red is so much fun in a harp. The thing about this harp, obviously there are fewer strings. Again, it's a 27 string harp, but also it doesn't have any levers. For this harp, you could definitely start into book one, but after several lessons, you would realize that we are going to change key and those levers that you saw in the other harps are going to come in extremely handy. They'll be very important. This harp is a great little travel harp and I also use it for small children's groups when they are first beginning and we only play in the key of C. Now we're well launched into lesson one. First things first, be joyful, be a happy beginner. Try to remember that throughout the entire book one if you can. And how to sit at the harp. That's where we'll begin. So sit so that you're near the edge of the chair and that your feet are comfortably placed under your knees. Now we're going to pull the harp back to the right shoulder. If it feels like when you're looking at it, it's too straight on and you're feeling a little bit cross-eyed and you can't really see which string is which, we can fix that right away. Just turn the harp so you push the shoulder back that way towards your shoulder and your face comes along the side of it. Now your head should be straight and not tilted out to the side like that. Our heads were meant to turn this way and this way and that works just fine on the harp, but they were not meant to lean sideways. I'll try to remind you that many times in book one as you're trying to see your strings don't tilt your head sideways, keep it up. So breathe easily and you'll have no tension in your body. Just relax. That's the main thing about beautiful heart playing, you're relaxed. The next thing we're going to do is look at how do the fingers work. What I'm doing with my hand is I'm going to do what I call a hand flap. And I open the hand a little bit like this and bring the fingers into the palm like that. You can actually hear the sound of your fingers hitting the palm of your hand. So not to open all the way up, but just open partially and bring them in closed so that this part of your finger is flat to the palm and fully closed. Let's try that several times. You know you can practice this all week when you're away from the harp. If you're just sitting watching television or looking at something else, you can just have one hand flapping, like so, building your muscles. The thumbs will flap over like that. So your thumbs flap just above there and they'll close just over this knuckle. So now let's do the two things together. Pull in and over. Flap fingers and thumb fingers and thumb, fingers and thumb. The angle that I'm looking for is a right angle right here. So when you're closed, you're like this, not like that. Bring those knuckles right down. Okay. Now we're actually going to touch the harp. So counting the fingers, the thumb is number one, this is two, three, and four. In the harp world, we don't play with finger five. He's too short and he can't reach this, the whole chord. So we're going to take finger two, which is generally the smartest finger, and place it right in the middle of C. The C strings are red. You might want to look at your harp right now and play all the red strings, just touch them. string you can. Anytime you feel like you would like to practice what I've just said, put me on pause and I'll be right here when you get back.
So finger two is going to touch the C string. Remember the hand flap we did? When you opened out, your finger is pointing down the string like this. So it's like you have an angle looking down the string. Your thumb's sitting up, just waiting for his turn. Squeeze the string. Feel the tension on it. How much tension is there on that string before you even go to play it? The rest of the fingers will just follow along with finger two. So we're going to squeeze, release, so the hand flap happens and your finger two ends up right in your palm. There's one more element. There's squeeze, release, and then relax. Squeeze, release, and relax. So right inside the muscle of your hand, you let everything go after you've played. This is a wonderful technique to play with beautiful tone. Squeeze, release, now relax. It also keeps you from going too quickly. Now we're going to do that with the right hand three times. And now we'll do it with the left hand three times or more. I think what I'll do is play an octave lower. An octave is eight strings below. So this red string to this red string, C to C is an octave. So the lower octave, I'm gonna play with finger two of my left hand. I'm gonna squeeze the string, squeeze it, release, and relax. Squeeze, release, relax, and again. I'll say one more thing about where the right hand and the left hand are oriented. For the most part, especially at the beginning, your right hand will play from middle C all the way up. Try that out. Right hand pulls up. Use finger two and try that glissando. It's just so much fun. With the left hand, we play everything from middle C below. You see how much easier it is to reach down with your left than with your right. It's the comfort factor. It's practical. So with the thumb, let's play down the harp. One more. Nice. You'll see a note at the bottom of page four that says Take it slowly. Slower is better. So place finger two back on middle C again. And as we go up, we're going to go up the alphabet. So C, D, E. So two strings above C is an E. And we're going to put our thumb on it. Now in harp, you're going to hear this a lot from any teacher that you meet. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You'll hear it over and over. And believe me, I will remind you. So place your thumb so the angle of your thumb is up the, up the string and you've got a nice lot of flesh on the string so you can make a beautiful tone with it. Squeeze it. Hold finger two right where it is. Squeeze your thumb and play it over to the knuckle and relax. Squeeze. Release. Relax. Squeeze. Release. Relax. And see if you can hold your second finger on this string at the same time. Practice that through several times. Now let's switch hands. Again, we'll go an octave lower. Place finger two on the low C. Point the finger down and the thumb points up. Squeeze, release, relax. Squeeze, release, relax. And again. Starting to
to sound beautiful. We've got two notes so far. Now let's make a tiny little song out of this. We're going to play with finger two on C, the red, and the thumb on D, a step up from it. So we'll play this. One after the other. Let's try that again. Now let's step up from there. So where your finger two was on C a minute ago, now we're going to move up to D. I call that a step. When you go from one string to the next string, it's a step. Now we'll take the thumb and put it a step above D. So now we have D, E. Now let's step up to E and F. Voila! A blue string. F's are blue. This blue string, this one, and this one, all will have a similar sound to them because they're all F. Now we're going to play E, F. Step up again. Now finger two's on F. And the thumb is on a step above. Let's keep going up. Now are you remembering the hand flap and the thumb closing over? Let's start over again and try that whole set. Beautiful. Now we'll switch hands. We don't want the left hand to get left out. If you happen to be left-handed, lucky for you, because then all your accompaniment patterns may be more relaxed, more strong, but it doesn't matter. We still have to work them both. C, D. So finger two on low C, thumb on D. Now let's step up. D, E. Step up, E, F. Squeeze, pull it into the palm all the way. Thumb closes over. Squeeze, pull it into the palm. Thumb closes over. And once more. Now let's practice that whole left hand again. Rest assured you can go at your own speed. If you want to go slower than that, that's just great. What we've just done, I'm calling stepping up. Step from one string to the next. Now we're going to do super steps, where we do alternate hands. If this is going too fast for you, put me on pause again and practice it for yourself at your own speed. Super steps. Right hand, left hand, then step up. And they're on the same two strings. Are you closing all the way in with your finger? Pull right into the palm. Pull into the palm. So when I'm closed, I have this end of the hand flaps position. We have one more exercise for lesson one this week. So we're going to play thirds now. This is a nice harmony sound. So we'll place finger two on C again. 
This time E is for our thumb. So C, skip a string, E. You see how that looks? And we're going to squeeze them at the same time and play them together. And what I have to watch is that I bring my, when I play my finger two, it comes right into the palm. When I play my thumb, it comes right over. That's a little bit of an acquired taste. Give yourself time to work it out. Squeeze, release, fully close, relax. Now let's move up to D, skip a note, F. So there's a third, that's the name of that interval between those two notes. There's three notes involved. We play the bottom one and the top one. That's called a third. Squeeze, replace, a step up from there. And keep stepping up, closing every time. sound beautiful? Practice that again. Let's try the left hand now. Squeeze C and E, second finger and thumb. This might be a little more tricky if you're right-handed. Squeeze them both. Let's try that again a few times. C and E, squeeze, and my hand is closing right like that with a beautiful hand flap position. Let's try that again. This time we're going to step up. Step up. Step up again. If it's not working very well, don't even worry about it. Just try it again. By the time a week goes by, you'll be amazed at yourself. doing with all these exercises today is listening for a beautiful tone. If you dig into the string and squeeze it, it will give you back the most lovely resonance, especially if your harp's in tune, which we are going to talk about in the next lesson. Meanwhile, listen for that beautiful harmony or that beautiful single note, and you'll notice that the gorgeousness of the tone is in between the notes. That was lesson one. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Your practice points for this week are going to be remember your hand flaps, relax, and be joyful. Listening for that beautiful tone in between the notes is where you'll find it. I'll see you back here next week for lesson two. And remember, do practice. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind